Go to any supermarket and pick an aisle, cereal, say, or yogurt. It seems as though we have an incredibly diverse selection of things to eat, but the fact is, we do not. While we have the capacity to grow thousands of edible plants, our industrial agricultural system has caused us to lose so much biodiversity that at this point, some three quarters of our food comes from only 12 plants and five animal species. Joe Yonan talked with Simran Sethi about how true appreciation learned through taste might be the only way to keep our favorite foods from disappearing. So you write that we're losing foods. What do you mean? What I mean specifically is that we're losing biodiversity in foods, from diversity in the soil to diversity and you know the actual existence of pollinators to the seeds that we sow, the fruits and vegetables that we grow, and even the animals that we raise for livestock. So when I go into the supermarket, it sure doesn't seem like we don't have diversity. <laughs> exactly. As a matter of fact, I decided to uh, pay a visit to Walmart and I counted 153 flavors of ice cream, <laughs> eight different types of yogurt, and you know, it looks like we have a plethora of choice, but 90, 90% 90 of them came from one breed of cow, the Holstein Frison. Wow. So what difference does it ultimately make, Simran? The stakes are really quite high. It's not just relegated to ice cream and milk. You know, this is what we see echoing through the apples that we find in the grocery store. We have the capacity to grow over 7,500 apples all over the world, but less than 100 of them are grown commercially in the United States. Um, and every historic fruit and vegetable variety that was once found in the U.S. has now disappeared. This matters because we need diversity for resilience. And there have been some disastrous consequences of the loss of diversity through our history, right? Right. There indeed have. Uh, you know, the Irish potato famine uh, was the result of a disease that wiped out most of the potatoes that were grown. One third of the population depended on potatoes for food, and one eighth of the population, about one million people, ended up dying. And it's not simply a consequence of the loss of biodiversity, but everything that's kind of around it. We realize that we're creating a really treacherous situation. Researchers recently learned that the whole world has moved toward what we call the global standard diet. We see pockets of biodiversity, but globally what we're seeing is a trend toward standardization, a trend toward wheat, rice, corn, soybeans, and palm oil. This is what the world is eating now. And this is a challenge because if we lose the diversity, we lose the resilience that we have in order to reach back in and find solutions when a crop succumbs to disease or to pests or with climate change where we don't know exactly what will happen in the future. We need these backup systems. So this is really about pivoting in the grocery store toward the olive oil or turning toward the heirloom tomatoes or craft beer or the craft chocolate or the specialty coffee. All of these opportunities are in our hands and they really are ones that will transform how food is grown and what is available. Simran, thank you so much for sharing this with us. It's fascinating. 